Hello and welcome back to the NWR Virtual Healthcare Conference. My name's Matt Wright. Next up today, we have Vittorio Pupo, the COO of Radio Farm Theranostics, listed under the ticker RAD. Radio Farm Theranostics is focused on the development of radio pharmaceutical products for diagnostic and therapeutic uses in areas of high unmet medical need. Before we hear from Vittorio, a reminder for anyone in the audience that if you have a question, please type it in using the Q&A panel uh, within Zoom. I'll hand it over to you, Vittorio. Please go ahead. Matt, thank you. Thanks for having us and uh, nice being here. I'm going to talk about you know, the company Radio Farm Theranostics and um, give um, an update on our portfolio. Um, this is um, the AMER. Um, this is a slide where we try to describe um, a little bit what the Theranostics and the Radio Pharmaceutical out. Essentially, uh, the product that we're developing is of three components. Marketing molecule, we see on the top left, I get the, and attached to it is a radioactive isotope. And um, so the three components are the targeting molecule with the high affinity specific to the cancer cell. This can either be a small molecule, peptide, or an antibody. The radioisotope, the radioisotope attached to it is what allows uh, to see or treat uh, the cancer cell. And, um, and there is a linker in between joining the uh, isotope to the targeting molecule. So um, what's uh, unique about um, theranostics and um, this application radio pharmaceutical is that uh, to the same molecule is attached a low energy isotope that allows to see and measure the disease with radioactive isotopes, or the isotope can be replaced with a higher energy isotope. And that isotope has got an extreme selectivity to the cancer cell and delivers the energy and hence, you know, kills the, kills the cancer cells. So this is the principle of what the radio pharmaceutical so theranostics is. If we look at the, some of the applications in theranostics, there is a, a lot of cancer types, of course, you know, and uh, I want to focus specifically on prostate. Prostate is a very big um, uh, need and um, not many products have been approved um, in the U.S. Prostate has several agents in both imaging and one in uh, therapy, which in uh, diagnostics, there are three, four products now being approved. And if you look to the right, the bottom section illustrates the quarterly sales of the aggregate of those products. So we're now talking about, you know, in excess of $200 million of um, uh, aggregate sales in Q4 2022. And you can see from the trajectory, this is growing very strongly. So the projected revenues of a market of a billion dollars or more than that is uh, already kind of happening. On the right-hand side, we're looking at the therapy. So there is one product from Novartis, which has been approved early last year. There are two quarters of reported sales. The name of the agent is Pluvicto. As you can see, it doubled. They sold close to 100 million in the first quarter of launch, um, 180 in the second quarter. There have been some um, slowdowns due to supply chain and manufacturing capacity. Um, the consensus of the analysts and what uh, Novartis has um, indicated, they're expecting peak revenues uh, about $2.5 billion. So this, are, this is a sizable market, and this is prostate. You know, Here we're listing all the tumor types uh, for which there are um, radiopharmaceuticals uh, in development. Um, the other thing, you know, this is a relatively new industry, um, but there has been a lot of interest in terms of On the right, we counted the number of transactions in um, radio pharmaceuticals. Last year, it was 48. It was less than half, um, about 18, and six, seven years ago. Um, and there is a growing trend, a growing interest. We have reported on the left some of the most um, meaningful um, deals and licensing um, transactions of, um, of Q4 last year, really. So. Um, Alpha 9th Aeronautics uh, had the Series B oversubscribed. Uh, Clovis uh, was acquired by Novartis, uh, 50 million plus uh, development milestone and royalties. Um, I want to point to the last one, Atlantis and Point Biopharma exclusive license agreement. 
There is a $260 million upfront for the licensing of two agents, and then um, what could be a colossal number just of milestone and royalties. If we move from the industry specifically onto uh, the farm theranostics, and these are just you know, a few bullets uh, illustrate. We have a, a beautiful portfolio, a highly prospective portfolio of radio pharmaceutical, uh, focusing on both the imaging and therapy. Uh, we have you know, a novel platform spanning different ways uh, with a broad IP and long um, patent life, a strong management team. We're going to talk about it in a second. Um, we have a uh, um, flow of uh, news and milestone in the next uh, in the next 12 months, a good manufacturing um, um, supply and chain agreement for the key isotope, which is key in our industry, and good commercial and licensing agreement. Um, some of the milestone, the company was incorporated um, just about two years ago, uh, started in 2021, was in Australia, where the first phase of $20 million, uh, with that, the company started, you know, created a team and board of directors, we licensed in four technologies, I'm going to talk about them in a second. Um, and then the year concluded uh, with... Uh, Twenty twenty two was about strengthening the company and really getting that um, up and running and moving, um, with an expansion of the management team, the board of directors. We licensed two more technologies uh, in the around you know, the summer of last year. Um, we signed a very interesting agreement uh, and we formed a joint venture company with MD Anderson, uh, which has given us access to more assets. In terms of what happened to the product, uh, we read uh, there was a, a positive publication of a phase two study in brain metastasis on Pivalate, which goes under the name of um, uh, RAD 101. And far to the right, uh, Trevor Hexen, which is RAD 301, we got an FDA IND approval to start a phase one study in pancreatic cancer. And in the meantime, we also raised another 10 million in the, in the, fall, of, um, in the fall of last year. This year, we've announced the NASDAQ dual listing, the, the application for it. You know, we announced that last month. We expect you know, this to go positively through in the next couple of months. And we recently acquired two more technologies in preclinical for prostate cancer. Look at the management team, the CEO of the company, Ricardo Canavari. Ricardo comes with very strong uh, oncology experience. He spent, you know, 20 artists. His last job was of chief of the radio pharmaceutical branch called um, uh, 3 um, And the chief officer got extensive field. Uh, Professor Mosley is a nuclear medicine physician. He comes from L. He spent time in the industry for Tom Tulip, a very seasoned um, industry leader. He's our chief business officer. Uh, Paul Hopper is our founder, executive chairman. And then we've got you know, very seasoned leaders running clinical uh, operations. Scott Harper, uh, Dr. Antti Bagener comes uh, uh, from Novartis as well. Insurance clinical development. Uh, Rama Schmitz uh, does uh, CMC, B. Reagan uh, Clinical Regulatory. And uh, director of translation and Levant is Mezzaro, the medical director Gitasha Chan. Then we've got you know, a few more people in the, in the team. Very strong, experienced team. In terms of the uh, pipeline of the portfolio, we have six uh, products slash platform we're working on. Um, starting from the left, we've got two in clinical, Pivalate and Trevahexin. I alluded to those earlier, and we've got four in preclinical. Pivalate is a small molecule um, targeting fatty acid synthetate. It was uh, licensed by Imperial London with an indication in brain metastasis. Indication in brain metastasis. A vaccine was licensed for him to spin off for the Munich University in Germany. It's a peptide that the target is alpha V, uh, alpha v beta 6 integrin with an indication in pancreatic. We've got you know, four products uh, in Nanomab, which is a, a UK company. We have got a single domain monoclonal antibodies with different targets, PDL1, HER2, TROP2, and PTK7. Um, uh, PDL1 and HER2 are the most advanced uh, products uh, with targets in um, lung cancer and, um, and breast cancer, respectively, her, for HER2. Uh, PCA, MAB, and DAMP19 are two monoclonal antibodies. They were licensed by PCA, PSA, MAB, you know, from Memorial Sloan Catering, Lund, DAM19 from UCLA, and the uh, PSA product targets the KLK3 expression, and is a product that is going to be developed for prostate. DAMP19 
targets the LRR C15, and this is a product for osteosarcoma. And finally, the you know, DAM19 and PTP mu were licensed um, um, after the first, the, the first four in the summer of 2022. Uh, is a peptide uh, targeting PTP mu with potential indication for uh, various for a variety of brain tumors. So as you can see, a broad portfolio. If you look at what the company is focusing on, where we're, what we're working on, and will deliver. It, Three priorities for the first half. Ad101 Pivalate is, um, is an imaging agent uh, for brain metastasis. Uh, we're going to um, apply to the FDA uh, in, in Q2 this year, um, um, and we're going to look uh, for an expansion. Theo one, the, the IND has been granted uh, at the end of December last year. The first patient is planned um, uh, really in, in a month or two in, uh, in Q1, 2023. And we're also going to um, go live with our first uh, therapeutic, uh, RAD204, uh, which is one of the uh, nanobodies that we licensed. Uh, this one looks at the pd one um, and, um, and we're going to run a, a study in Australia we're going to apply for ethic committee approval in Q2 2023, and after approval, we're going to roll patients very fast. Uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes on the uh, on the out. So Pivalate um, is um, the, the the product candidate is an F18 agent the Pivalate attack fatty acid sensitivity. This is a radio pharmaceutical for the detection, characterization, monitoring of brain metastasis. The relevance, uh, so this is not targeting primary brain tumor passages, which are developed in uh, in large numbers of patients, unfortunately, about you know, 20 to 40 percent of cancer patients develop some kind of brain metastasis during the course of illnesses. And the, the currently available imaging metastasis, sorry, imaging agents have got some limitations due to sugar uptake, uh, sugar uptake that uh, are you know confounding the the study that was conducted in London. Um, looked at uh, patients with one or more cerebral metastasis for different tumors. Um, and what the trial assessed uh, were the uptake uh, in those metastasis, in fact, and with two cohorts, um, uh, pre and after treatment, so 11 eight patients in, in after treatment. And uh, and pivalate, you know, pivalate paid showed high uptake regardless of the uh, origin of the of the primary tumor. Um, so it's an imaging agent. It showed, you know, a nice picture. And like I say, a very high. Uh, what's happening with that after this encouraging positive um, results? Study, uh, we're running we're running an advisory board to get some guidance. So we're conducting some research, uh, and we will go to FDA. With the aim of moving, there are some uh, proof of concept uh, supporting therapeutic development. Uh, what I just talked about is the imaging agent only, and so we're it's still in development and try to finalize, you know, the uh, chemistry, the, the radiochemistry of the of the molecule. To look at the size of the opportunity, what this product could be, and we're using as a benchmark for imaging prostate the the so in the US alone there are about two hundred and forty-eight thousand just done cases of prostate cancer, of which about one hundred seventy thousand are eligible at the diagnostic. Average price per dose of the agents market it is just under five thousand dollars, about forty seven hundred, and you come to a, a revenue opportunity per annum um, in excess of eight hundred million. Now I showed you earlier that you know the business size and the total revenues generated last year are already surpassing this number. So you know a billion dollar is probably what's going to happen in the course of twenty twenty three. So if we look to take that as a benchmark, we look at brain metastasis, there is an even larger number of um, patients in terms of new cases per annum in the US, uh, 300,000. Uh, we're doing some um, quantitative and qualitative research to understand how many are eligible. 
But then I think you know, the, the target price for those uh, um, that we have in mind is compatible to that of prostate, which is realistic. I think you know, other agents are in that, um, in that range of numbers. So you can see that you know, uh, we're not venturing in, um, in uh, generating numbers on estimates, but uh, the, the price um, estimate seems reasonable. There is a, certainly a large number of patients, a large unmet need. So we believe this can be a real sizable opportunity for our company. Um, next, in the integrant product, um, what university? Um, so this is uh, um, is, is this a product being developed for the condition and monitoring of pancreatic cancer? Here, we're developing the pair of agents. So we're developing an imaging agent labeled with gallium sixty eight, and we will developing shortly after an. Uh, Both isotopes are going to be linked uh, to, uh, to the tribe. We have two clinical studies uh, which have had one is in Germany and the German Medical Act, and the trial analyzed the detection of uh, alpha integrin uh, in, uh, in PDEC patients. Uh, more than 60 patients have been administered, uh, mostly with pancreatic cancer, a few with head and neck. And the results uh, were very positive. You can see some pictures. Uh, what we've shown is a rapid and specific accumulation in the tag, in the PDAC, in a primary lesion, and metastasis with low big round, and so highly effective uh, images. The second study was conducted in India, and that's an interesting study also because this is a head-to-head -head study where we compared the, the images of trivahexin with those of uh, um, uh, and the trial uh, was a bit of a smaller trial, 17 patients, uh, uh, action, um, same goal, looking at um, patients. With and um, in all cases, there was a favorable tumor to background contrast uh, of trivahexin compared to F18 and FDG with sharper imaging and really not taking uh, in the surrounding tissue. So if you can see, in the in the picture at the bottom left, uh, there is a more significant uptake and image expression of trivaxin compared to FDG, which is uh, the most uh, um, the generic um, uh, PET agent used in uh, in oncology technology. So, in terms of next steps on trivaxin, um, the FDA granted the IND uh, the very end of the year. The phase one study will be a single center study in Q2 2023. We expect a fast enrollment, and given the fact that it's positive in India, we believe that um, and with the potential of um, for the therapeutic, uh, the final candidate molecule has been selected. Um, we're completing preclinical working, and so we're targeting you know early 2024. Um, for the clinical use of, um, uh, of the therapeutic agent of, uh, of Trevahex. Uh, in terms of what could be the market opportunity, uh, the number of new cases in the US is just over 6,000. Um, we patient. The price per dose is something that we're working on. Um, cost it, but maybe two injections will be needed. So something between and um, with the revenue opportunity of lastly uh, in the third product uh, which is going to be is the digital um, one uh, uh, body um, the um, this is interesting. So the, here, there is an imaging agent being developed uh, and the therapeutic agent. Um, Radio Farm Theranostics has uh, acquired the rights uh, for the imaging agent, uh, sorry, for the therapeutic agent labeled with lutetium. The imaging agent uh, is um, uh, and they are already in phase two with the technetium labeled um, um, imaging uh, product. So um, the PDL1 we know is expressed in about 50% of the 
non-small cell and cancer tumors. Um, RAT204 uh, is, is being developed, will be developed for the treatment of um, um, uh, PDL1 expression in cancer uh, for uh, positive metastatic uh, uh, non-small cell lung cancer. Victoria, I'll, I'll just jump in there. Um, I think we're just having a bit of trouble with your audio. So I'm just going to share the slide for you and see if that rectifies things. So just bear with me a moment. Okay, please go ahead, Victoria. Yeah, um, uh, just want to say where we are with it. You know, Lanthus is in phase two with agent. There is an agreement for data sharing with Lantis uh, for collaborating on the development. Uh, we plan to uh, apply um, in, um, in, um, in Q2 this year uh, for, to, start the study in, uh, to start the study in Australia. Next slide, Matt. Okay, uh, same comparison with the prostate benchmark, uh, this time looking at the therapy rather than uh, imaging. Uh, so the number of uh, patients is really comparable, about 250,000 or thereabout, you know, uh, new cases per annum. Uh, we're assessing the number of eligible patients. Uh, this is clearly a blockbuster opportunity. Um, prostate is going to be in excess of $2 billion. Uh, Lung could also be a very sizable uh, big market. Next one. Um, this is a full overview of the pipeline. I taught you about the top three priorities, and then the other products are going to be developed you know, shortly after. We've got you know, the HER2 agent uh, for breast and, uh, breast and gastric uh, prostate, the osteosarcoma agents. So uh, all of those, uh, we've got a pretty aggressive timeline, um, will be in human between the second half of this year and early in 2024. Next. Uh, some inflection points that we're anticipating building the momentum of the company in 2023. Uh, right now, we're working on the phase one trial, um, phase one um, uh, trial for 301. We're expecting first patient uh, for 301 and for 204, and the FDA feedback uh, on, um, on, on Pivolate, uh, possibly starting in phase three. And later in the year, we expect the readout you know, of 301. We expect, you know, first patients of two more uh, agents, you know, 204, um, 202, and 402, and then uh, the uh, starting the phase three study um, um, for, for people eight. Next. Uh, getting close to the end, this is a very important initiative that the company undertook last year. Um, it's a joint venture company with MD Anderson. Um, Ready Farm Theranostics owns 51%, and uh, MD Anderson owns 49%. We bring to the uh, joint venture company management team, regulatory strategy, clinical development, uh, and the Anderson brings you know uh, the assets uh, molecule and then um, the R and D preclinical and manufacturing activities. Uh, there is a lead program. Um, it targets uh, B seven H three. Uh, it's going to be focused on uh, colorectal cancer, and we've got you know three more products uh, which have not been disclosed yet. You know we're finalizing the IP. Um, but this uh, grants uh, company access uh, to a phenomenal institution like MD Anderson in terms of you know preclinical clinical activity that can be performed here. Next slide. Uh, this is the scientific advisory board. We have been fortunate to, to have the ongoing collaboration of all the inventors of so the various assets, and so this is uh, those are the the, the people who really led the um, early stages of um, development and dimension of, uh, of the agents, and they're all active uh, contributors uh, and participants uh, to the scientific uh, direction of the company. I think this is what I had, Matt. Uh, this is the first slide um, that we had. So um, I'm gonna pause here and uh, happy to work with you on uh, any questions. Great, thank you, Vittorio. Uh... We'll jump into a few questions. Once again, if anyone from the floor has any questions, please feel free to uh, type them in using the Q&A panel within Zoom. Um, the first question, Vittorio, uh, there's been a lot of uh, interesting developments in the radio pharmaceutical space recently. Uh, can you just talk more to that, please? Well, uh, I think that the uh, radio pharmaceutical science has been strong in the air for, for um, until recently, probably the Funding available, and I think you know what is um, 
move from Novartis uh, now a few years ago when they invested in uh, two back-to-back -back acquisitions, spending $6 billion uh, uh, for what has been the development of two agents that are now to market. So um, we think that the, the potential of the technology is very strong. Um, the clinical outcomes uh, of the agents of the market are indeed very strong, both in imaging and in therapy. Um, and this is giving, you know, positive, uh, um, I can say, encouragement uh, to, to the industry. Um, we're, you know, in terms of our portfolio, we think that we've got some uh, fantastic asset uh, um, and we look forward to being, you know, more in the clinic uh, to develop those. And on that point of assets, you've obviously got a deep portfolio, Vittorio. How do you focus? Or how do you decide uh, where to focus your attention uh, across the uh, across the range of assets? Well, it's all about prioritization, Matt. You know, so uh, right now we've got you know three, um, which are the priorities, uh, the three agents I talked about. You know, and then I think we're progressively going in what the, we internally call waves, and and we look at the combination of you know. Um, market opportunity in terms of uh, selection and prioritization, um, and uh, where we are also on the preclinical stage in terms of the development of, of the you know preclinical information that are essential to go in humans. So the first three are well defined, you know, and we are going to follow uh, with the um, HER2 agent for the mon uh, single domain antibody for breast, and um, the 402, which is the prostate agent. And um, and then most likely with the 600 series, uh, which targets also brain tumors. And you touched briefly on um, securing uh, supply of isotopes. Can you just give a bit more detail on that? Because I know that's a key step in the process. Yeah, um, isotope supply is has always been challenging. Um, um, I think we're very fortunate that we have uh, signed. Uh, a, a you know, variety of agreements uh, for the key isotopes. So for each of these th more strategic isotopes, uh, we have um, two agreements in place. So this covers um, essentially all the therapy isotopes that we're working on. I'm going to mention lutetium, actinium. Um, so we think that we're well covered. Great. Well, thanks for the presentation and for your time today, Vittorio. We'll leave it there. Um, next up in the conference, we have Antares Technologies at 9.40 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, but thanks again, Vittorio, for your time today. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, everyone.